just to wrap around that loop, we talked about the work, we talked about the, the people. Um, how are you leveraging your network? I've loved seeing the deep connection and collaboration and what seems like friendship. What is so interesting, what I love about my team is that we have such incredible boundaries. And I think that when you think about balance and a desire for it, boundaries have to go hand in hand. And I think that that's super powerful in every communication. And you said the golden word there, consistency, right? Consistently doing that, consistently um, communicating that message. And um, one, of, one of my big goals for this year is just continue to show up. And especially through video form, through people hearing my voice. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. I am so excited for today. We brought back our Gold Digger coaching sessions and I am with a very, very special woman today. So Nicole, welcome to the Gold Digger Podcast. Thank you, Jenna. It is an absolute dream come true to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Give us the landscape of kind of where you're finding yourself in your business and entrepreneurship, even in your season of life, just so that we kind of have the foundation laid as we dive into some of the amazing questions that you prepared. Absolutely. In this season of life, I find myself as a mama to two littles, um, a wife, an early career development strategist, and a women's ministry leader, because I can't get enough of doing all the things, right? Yes. Um, and I've been running my company, Education Advancement Consulting, for two and a half years now. It was born out of the pandemic with a newborn and a toddler, oh as so many um, women did to take the leap to spend more time with their kids. And on a day-to-day -day basis right now, I find myself talking to either career development offices, inclusion um, and diversity offices, first generation offices on college campuses about how are they helping their students navigate that path from college to career with the least amount of stress possible. So we talk a lot about career wellness. How are you managing your professional development, your mental well-being, um, as well as financial literacy so that you are at your best when you advocate for yourself for what's next. Amazing. So basically you're a consultant. Is that how you would describe yeah. what you're doing? Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. And who is your like dream client? Like when you get an email coming in, who is it that you like love to work with? When I get an email, I would love to work with career development offices okay. um, on a university campus specifically. So more B2B, B2 B2 not B2C. B2B. B2 Got it. Yes. B2B uh, has been working really well for me. I love that. Amazing. Okay. Yes. Let's dive on in to your questions and we'll kind of let the path go. And if I have any follow-up questions, I'll drop them as we go. Okay, sounds great. So Jenna, you and I are in similar seasons of motherhood, right? Yes. With littles at home, balancing everything between um, yuck at home sometimes and trying to figure out how to squeeze in meeting times, um, TV time, whatever it is. And I just want to know, right? I, I, I'm thinking of the Jenna who turned a $300 camera into a stay-at-home seven-figure business, work from home, stay in uh, seven-figure business. How did you manage that balance as you were growing your business? Because it probably took a village. It didn't come overnight. So I'd love to know, how did you manage that work-life balance? Yeah. I mean, we were laughing before we got on air because my family got hit with the crazy flu bug. And it's just yesterday as I was going to bed after a day of just like disaster in our household of laundry and taking care of everybody. It made me like think so much of how grateful I am to be an entrepreneur and have the flexibility to you know, at the drop of a hat, pick up my daughter from school and, you know, mm -hmm. take care of cancel things and things like that. And like, that is so wrapped in privilege that like, we even have the capacity to be flexible in that way when life happens, because guess what? Life is going to happen. And yes. balance is such a tricky thing for me because I feel like women, I don't ever hear men talk about balance. Do you ever hear men talk no. about balance? It's such a Never. funny thing when you think about it. <laughs> and I feel like balance has been ingrained in us as women 
that we have to juggle it all and keep all the balls in the air at all the times and do it all beautifully while smiling. Right. And it's just like not possible. And I remember when I was studying some like language for my book and I looked up the word Mm -hmm. balance and balance is a moment that isn't meant to be maintained. And so it's Mm -hmm. funny that we approach balance as this like state where we're like, we just want to be in balance all the time. It's a moment. Like you can be in balance Mm -hmm. for one moment and the next moment be out of it. And so I've had to really figure out which seasons are meant for like hustling and where the business is coming a little bit more first and which seasons are for parenthood. And I will say that the majority of the last five years of being a mom, it's been the scales have been tipped to motherhood, but I am able to do that because I had already been an entrepreneur for so long. When I think Mm. about you starting your business, you're still relatively new, two and a half years into it. Also raising kids, you don't necessarily have the bandwidth to be like, I'm going to press the brakes because the gas pedal is still getting pushed down. Right. Right. And so for me, like I've been so fortunate, my husband stays at home. Like we have the ultimate flexibility to be able to do these things. It's not possible Mm -hmm. for everyone. It's not realistic for most people. And so what I want to encourage people to do is to not say, well, this is what I have to do in order to achieve balance, but to just have a level of awareness and consciousness around Mm. the choices you're making on a day-to-day basis. Is this where you are needed most right now? Is it your business? Is it your babies? Is it your life? What is it? And I think that when we raise our level of consciousness, we stop Mm -hmm. feeling that like self-deprecating, like, oh, I didn't get done what I should have, or I wasn't as present as I should have. And you are just more conscious and aware of like, this is where I put my energy and time today. And this was the Mm. best place for it. And so that's what I would encourage because my story is not going to be like yours and not going to be like anyone else's. Our stories are so unique, but I think that the biggest thing for me when it comes to balance is really just an awareness and consciousness of where I'm choosing to put my time and energy and allowing that to just be what it is. And so I think that can kind of help because when we're feeling out of balance, it's usually mm-hmm. just that we're not really going into where we're spending that with a level of consciousness. Does that make any sense? It makes a lot of sense, when, especially when you're, I'm holding on to you saying it's a moment, right? Yes. It's, it's a moment. not a constant state of being. It's a yes. moment. And so by choosing what to focus on in that moment yes. and what, what matters. So I know for these few hours while the kids are at school, what I'm choosing to focus on is my business and growing yes. my business. Yes. But when pickup happens or I get a call in the middle of the day, like, Last week, two times, I just forgot to pack their lunch (laughs) and had to run it over to school. And I didn't have to tell anybody. I just picked my myself up and took it to school because I have that flexibility. And that's what mattered in that moment because I can do that. And that's what's valuable. My kids need to eat. So I I appreciate that you say the moment and then just focusing on what matters in that moment, because I tend to mix it all up and no one's happy. Yes. And that's, there's no worse feeling than going to bed after working hard all day, whether it's in mom mode or work mode and going to bed and being like, what did I even get done? That is like the worst (laughs) feeling when you were like, I was running around with a chicken and it's head cut off. And I still can't even tell you what I did. And so it's like, when you have that level of awareness, you're like, okay, and this is what mattered today. And this is what I did today. And like, rest easy. You earned it. Go to bed. <laughs> mm, I, I love that. And actually this, this takes me, um, it, it makes me want to just kind of dive deeper into that because you mentioned you have an an incredibly supportive husband, right? And you're able to also be flexible when you need to in mom mode. And what does that look like in work mode? Because I saw the selfie on your blog with this beautiful group of women behind you, this team. Um, Can you just share what that balance looks like at work? Because I know these seven figures are not just made with you doing all the things all the time. Yes. I have the most amazing team. And what's so interesting, Mm -hmm. and for so many people listening, I think there is such intimidation around being responsible for paying other people, right? Especially Mm -hmm. when you're starting out and you're not totally certain. And so my team has been built 
very slowly over time. And what is so interesting, what I love about my team is that we have such incredible boundaries. And I think that when you Mm. think about balance and a desire for it, boundaries have to go hand in hand. And so we have really strict rules around how we communicate, the time that we communicate, how we approach each other, the conversations. And so even this morning when I got online, I had messages of like, how are the kids? Is everyone feeling better after this flu? Like, how are you? It wasn't like, here's what you got to do today or here's what I need from you. It was like human Mm. first, work second. And I think that that's super powerful in every communication. And it's so funny because I learned so much of this from my right-hand gal, Marissa, because Mm -hmm. she's so beautiful with her communication. And oftentimes once I open my laptop, my brain goes straight to work where I could just fire Mm -hmm. off work questions. So often I will type out the work questions and then I will go backspace to the beginning and say, (laughs) good morning. I hope you got good sleep. How are you doing today? Here's what I need. And so it's been this like beautiful reminder of kind of even mixing like the masculine and feminine energy of like, Mm -hmm. A lot of times when I go into work mode, I'm like, let's just get it done. Let's go like go pedal to the metal. And then I try to be like very like soft and gentle with my kids and my husband. And so Mm -hmm. figuring out that balance there. But what's beautiful with my team is that I, they have so much ownership around what they do and how they do it. And so Mm -hmm. we've kind of gotten into a place where like we ideate together the first 10%. 80% is usually completed by the person doing the task. And then the last 10% is again, going back to that original vision, doing the review and things like that. And so it takes a lot of like loosening the grip, letting go of control, Mm -hmm. which so many of us have a problem with. Um, and also just trust, (laughs) right? What, what resonates with you in that? (laughs) You know, it's it's the letting go, right? Mm-hmm. And of uh, control. I heard somebody the other day say, my business is growing because, you know, I can, uh, I used to do 70% of the work yeah. and I would outsource 30%, but I was still doing so much. Yes. So now I have built a team of people that ha- are experts in the space. Yeah. So I can have the calls when necessary. And then I immediately outsource yeah. the work itself itself to the rest of the team. And I want to do, I'm still in the, I want to do the 70%. Um, I know I have no business doing the 70%, but so that really resonates with me letting go because you're hiring this person because of their expertise, um, because of what they bring to the table. Right. Um, I think of even just right now, my experience, um, with Christy who has been phenomenal, by the way, her communication, her warmth, comes across and I love that that's a reflection of you and who you are and that's coming across in your team so Mm -hmm. it even speaks to the synergies you all have one thing I think that's so interesting and I'd be so curious if you started to just pay attention because you said you are doing the 70 percent and honestly Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful for founders to do every piece of the work at some point, yes. right? Like I can still yes. do every single thing that happens in my business. I don't want to, and I'm not the most qualified to do most of those things. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of times the resistance in like loosening the grip and letting go of control comes because we're worried that we're going to let go of the things that we love the most or the things that light yes. us up. And so I would just be so curious if you started to pay attention to the things that you dread, the things that you keep putting off, the things that you kind of grumble about, those are the things where you can start to let go of those pieces, knowing that somebody else loves doing that, right? Like my support person, her name is Steph. She has been with Mm -hmm. me, I think for seven or eight years, which being in a support role like that for that amount of time is incredible. And she is so good at it. And I Mm -hmm. would hate to answer support tickets. I would just hate it. That would like be like my (laughs) worst job ever. And so the fact that she enjoys it and it gives her energy and she like shows up every single day and has done so for years and years and years, like it's just a reminder of like the things we don't like someone else likes them. And so it kind of helps like the loosening of the grip in that way where you can still Mm -hmm. hold on to the parts that you love that require you that you give that like special sauce to. But then if you just even start making a little list of what lights me up and what drains me, you might start to Mm. see trends and places where somebody else could step in to help so that maybe you go to like 60, 40, and then 50, 50, 
And when you get more freed up, you might even find different things that light you up that you hadn't even considered before. I'm going to make that list because there's some things that are floating that yeah. I need to put down and just, you know, um, put on a list that I need to put away and give to someone else. And I'm actually finding that some of my village is intervening at this point and yes. saying, Hey, can I do this for you? I can do it. Yeah. Hey, can I do this for you? Right. Because they also know I'm not in a stage where I can pay all the people and do yeah. all the things, yeah. right. There's so much, you know, you, you remember, and I'm sure you're still, and you are still very mindful of that, but especially in the beginning where every single dollar oh my gosh yes means a whole lot it still yeah. does now i'm sure yeah. um because you're still accountable but that initial stage of i can't just decide on a whim yeah. um or i've done it and it's burned me or whatever else so i'm starting to see my village kind of intervene and say okay yeah. well i can help you with this i can help you with that and i say oh you know what great. I actually don't like doing that. And it's stopping me from recording this thing. It's stopping me from, um, uh, publishing the podcast I should have a year ago, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I'd rather I be doing it. this. I love it. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, I think just to wrap around that loop, we talked about the yep. work, we talked about the, the people, um, how are you leveraging your network? I've loved seeing the, deep connection and collaboration and what seems like friendship as well with um the queen herself amy porterfield oh my gosh yes. i've seen um social posts of like retreats with some really yeah. re really really cool people in your industry and i know that didn't happen overnight so can you tell me a little bit about how you started leveraging your network yeah I love this. And I, I love that you were bringing this up too, because I think entrepreneurship mm -hmm. can be so lonely, like so crazy yes. lonely. Right. And I think too, when we're starting out and you are maybe battling like imposter syndrome and all these doubts and questions and like imagining you with two little ones starting a business and trying to like build relationships, like friendships are hard at this stage of life. They take a lot of Very. effort and energy. <laughs> which a lot of times yeah. us tired moms don't have to give. Right. So I'm just like yeah. bowing down to you that this is even a question. Um, <laughs> what's so interesting is like, you can go and find friends in Facebook communities. Like we have the amazing gold mm -hmm. digger podcast, Facebook insiders group. It's like 60,000 people. That's a place yes. where you can find relationships. But what I have really learned and seen over and over and over again, and I can literally draw like a line in the sand of like before and after is that when I've invested to be in rooms with people that I admire or people that are leading the way or people that are ahead of me on the path, building connections with people that are also willing to invest in that and see the value mm -hmm. in it brings a different level of commitment. And I have had mm. so many times where there's like an amazing group of women and they're like, let's do like a monthly zoom call and we'll all connect and we'll talk about business and life and all these things. And when there's no mm -hmm. buy-in, no one really shows up. It's like, you have to right. put your skin in the game. Right. And so mm -hmm. for me, like joining a mastermind years ago, when I was at a really pivotal place in my career, I was still a wedding photographer, solely a wedding photographer, mm -hmm. thinking about getting into online courses and podcasting and stuff. I made a really significant investment, which isn't always possible at the beginning, but something right. to put on your vision board for a few years from now is like, what rooms mm -hmm. do I want to be in? What's so interesting is, is that investment has built so many amazing relationships that are now free relationships, right? Like being right. in that room developed these deeper relationships with people who were also at a similar place and stage and also mm -hmm. willing to invest in like seeing how valuable relationships are. What's right. also interesting and something that I want to say is that as you start to build relationships with other people, you can really start to see a chasm between the people who are exactly as you want them to like, as you believe they are and people mm -hmm. who have like personas. And I just say like, pay attention to every bit of it and listen to your gut. And I think that we have mm. a gift as women. I think men have intuition too, but I think we as women have <laughs> a deeper internal knowing that we can yes. tap into. And I will say like, I have a pretty good gut on me of just like initial feelings and energy of like, oh, I really like this person or, you know, I think they have really great values and they live into those mm -hmm. and they are who they say they are. 
Um, and there's also been people who like, when you peek behind the curtain, you're like, nope, that is not it. Like that does not resonate. That is not what I want for my life or my community. Um, and so that's so interesting. And it was funny because like you said, Amy Porterfield, like we are best friends. Like we talk yeah. all day long. We talk about everything. Like I'm talking about oh, everything. I love and that. I, it's, it's been one of those relationships where like every day we're sending like five minute voice memos to each other. I feel like she's like the VP of my company and I'm hers <laughs> because we know so much. And I think mm -hmm. that that just takes time. And again, like I was her student first. And then I was like determined, like, I'm going to be her best student. I'm going to show up to every live she does. She's going to notice me in the comments and like, you know, and so it takes time. And so I would just say, first off, you're in a really busy stage of your life. And so go deep yes. and not wide with relationships. So really try okay. to find just a few people that you want to go deep with and commit to that. And second, like reach out. Like I reach out to so mm. many friends almost on a daily basis of saying no need to respond. I'm just letting you know, I'm thinking of you. Let me know how you're at mm. if you have a minute. And you know, I have friends from high school who are newly postpartum or I have friends with the same career as me and just checking in on this. And, and so it's just like being that like conscious of like, there's no urgency here, but I just want you to know, like mm -hmm. I'm here if you need me. And so go deep, not wide, listen to your gut. When you are in a place to invest, invest in really getting into the rooms with people that you admire, that you really want to be in community with. And once you're in community mm -hmm. with those people, continue to follow up. Okay. I, and you know what? The fortune, the fortune is in the follow-up yes, as I continue absolutely. to hear. And all I've heard, um, it, it must be a great sign because all I've heard since the beginning of the year, which yeah. seems like forever ago, by yeah. the way, dude, right. I, I don't <laughs> It was a long time ago, but all I've been hearing is that, you know, as you're making those investments, as you're really nurturing those relationships, it just doesn't start overnight. You don't just mm -hmm. get to bump shoulders or whatever it is. It takes some real time and effort and follow up. Yeah. So I really appreciate um, that advice because I am someone who really loves to connect with people. I yes. want to go deep. I fall fast. I, you know, I, I want to get to know you. I want to check in if we've got things we resonate about you know let, let's do it and I'm a vo voice note girl too um and I end up having a little notebook yep. <laughs> and you pause at minute one and you're yeah. like okay respond about this yeah. minute two yes <laughs> respond about that oh, right oh, no. um okay and I'm sure you and Amy do the same thing oh well we too. like go from like real estate to like workouts to like, what are you eating for lunch? To like, how is that team member doing to like, and I'm like, we need bullet points because by the end of the message, yeah. it's like, I know you asked something else and I got to remember what it is. I love where I'm going to steal that from you. I need a notebook with me at all times. <laughs> you need to, otherwise you're going to forget. And then you you won't know where to replay it. Right. So now a five minute voice note turns into a 10 minute. Voice That's note. right. So, I love it. Yes. Uh, okay, I love this. And so one of my God given talents, I really believe is to be able to share my story and share some of the, the, the things I have been through, um, because where I am today is inspired by my background growing up in Zimbabwe and navigating the American education system, the people that invested in me and supported me along the way. And now I feel God is telling me, hey, I want you to share your story. This is how other people resonate to you. People have been through some things and they want to hear how you have overcome. Yeah. Um, and I keep hearing that over and again. So I get nervous, <laughs> believe it or not, about how to share that story, like yeah. how to leverage that story. I'm on um, LinkedIn and I'll share on LinkedIn um, sometimes, but I've also been hearing, oh, you know, try TikTok and just share clips of advice and, yeah. and different things. But how do I do that in a impactful and meaningful way? How do I leverage my story and build a community while I'm at it? Because how I got connected to you yep. was through your gold digger community, yep. right? Through the Facebook group. It's a really, really cool place to be. Yeah. And it's so genuine because I see you in there. I see some of your team in there. It's active. Um, and there's just still that warmth that resonates. Mm -hmm. So I think you're the perfect person to ask yeah. because you're so personable. Uh, how does that come across in building a community? You're so sweet. 
have you ever taken the time to like sit down and write down like your five great stories like of just like stories that illustrate who you are why you are the way you are why you've gone into what you do like almost like your greatest hits like I'm picturing I'm gonna date Ooh. myself right now but I'm picturing like a cd and like cover and on the back it's like Nicole's greatest hits yeah. <laughs> in terms of stories have you ever done anything like that like built out a story bank I have not. I've actually always heard about making that, you know, that one story, yeah. the one that, you know, you pitch to for speaking engagements yeah. and, you know, have one or two pseudo topics underneath, but never a greatest hit. Yeah. And don't I, worry about aging yourself. <laughs> I remember when CDs had lyrics. So. That's right. So. Um, I have a, yeah. Anyway, store, CDs make me laugh. I, my nanny was in my car the other day and she was grabbing Ooh. something and she's like, what are, like, why do you have all these old discs? And I was like, oh girl, this is like our love letters of the past. Drew used to like make me a mix CD for every month we dated. And he wrote each song on it. And she's like, should I throw these away? And I was like, these are the love letters of our generation. Anyways, yes. what I would say is that you likely, and when you are consulting, when you are working with mm -hmm. students, when you are working with staff, you likely have stories that you lean on. And something that I think is yes. so interesting, and, and I feel like this might happen to you because it happens to me all the time, is that we are so fast to discount our stories saying like, they're not interesting, nobody cares, let's just mm -hmm. give them what they need. But there is so yes. much research around people remembering stories more than remembering the tools, tactics, strategies, anything else. And so mm. a very simple framework that has been taught by many different marketers. So I don't even know the origins of it is like story teach tool. So whenever you're mm. going into consulting or you're pitching yourself, you can tell the story, then you can teach the point that that story is making and then give somebody okay. a tool to get them a quick win. And so one thing that I do is I have now I'm, I'm going into my notes. I have a notes app in my phone where I have a thing where when I find myself with people, like whether I'm at a mastermind or at a mom's mm -hmm. dinner or whatever it is, and I tell a story and like it gets a reaction or people are laughing or like they're like, wait, what? Like those are the stories I write down in my notes app. And obviously I've been mm. through the process now of writing a book. And that's like, I'm building out this story bank where I'm like, oh, I should like think more about that story or think about like how to make that mm. even more interesting or compelling or more succinct. But I right. bet you have even just a handful of five stories and sometimes prompts can help us to like think of the stories. And so Nicole, like one story could be like, when did you realize you wanted to do what you're doing today? Um, when mm. is a time where you felt like you were going to fail and somebody came in and changed that trajectory for you? When is a time mm. where you decided like, I'm going out on my own limb and starting my business and like thinking through some of those pivotal milestone moments. And it's so interesting because I worked with like a speaking coach a couple years ago when I was speaking more. And I was mm -hmm. like, I can't tell this story. I tell it in my book. I've told on my podcast. And he's like, when you go to a concert, yes. do you want them to play their greatest hits or do you want them to play their new stuff? Now is not the time to test out the new material. Test it out when you're in conversation with people, but keep the ones that you're really good at your greatest hits reserved for clients, for community, for your students. And so it kind of helps remind you of like, wow. even if somebody's heard this five times, they haven't heard it this way today. And so it kind mm. of gives you that like ability to tell that story more than once and allow it to stick for people. Does that make sense? That makes so much sense. And it's like you're in my head because I was recently battling that. Yes. I said, Nicole, you've told this story. Yes. It's now in writing. You've put out a couple of videos about it. Yeah. You know, people know about the story. How can you keep sharing the story? Yeah. But then I thought of the one time on a random um webinar that I told the story and someone deeply resonated that she cried. She, we had even failed the same class, yes, you know, yes. and, you know, it was just because I told that part of the story and I had not shared that level of detail that day, but it's the same story. Yes. It's one of those greatest hits that continues to, to be played. It's like, okay, you know, I, I want to go to, um, the Usher concert this summer. I am, 
I'm expecting him to play all of his greatest hits yes. from 8701 to maybe the new stuff too. But yes. I want to hear the greatest hits. Yep. Yeah. And I think yeah, it gives us permission of like, you don't have to have like a library of great stories. If you can uh-huh. get really good at just a few of them that can help illustrate the points that matter the most to you or the things that you most commonly teach, it allows uh-huh. you to think of that framework of like story, teach tool, story, teach tool. And that allows you to like walk into situations with a different level of confidence of like, I know I have something to offer and I know something is interesting. And every time you tell it, you get better at it. So I love that. And I think too, when you were talking about like LinkedIn and TikTok and different things like that, LinkedIn seems like the most brilliant place for you to be, especially being in this career world and, and consulting like that feels like the perfect fit in my opinion. Um, And so Mm -hmm. I would say get comfortable telling the stories in the way that you feel is easily approached, whether it is through voice, whether it is through writing, whether it is through YouTube, I know you have your YouTube, like just different places Mm -hmm. like that and lean into that at first and then you can expand. Um, And so I think sometimes when we try to do too much too quick, we just get so overwhelmed. We don't do anything. And so it's like, you can control the input, which is you doing the work. You can't always control the Mm -hmm. output. And so just focus on getting really consistent with the input. And then you can always expand after two other platforms that might be calling to you. Okay. And you said the golden word there, consistency, right? Consistently doing that, consistently um, communicating that message. Yes. And, um, one of, one of my big goals for this year is just continue to show up yes. and especially through video form, through people hearing my voice, because when you hear me, when you talk to me, there's something that can be communicated there than I can do with my fingers. Yes. I can talk all day, but it just doesn't come off the same as when I write. So I'm glad I recognize that about myself. Yes. So I'm leaning into my strengths in order to do that. I love that. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Yes. I watched your YouTube video before this coaching session. So like it, yes. it, it is, there is something beautiful about <laughs> watching you communicate. It's super powerful. Thank so you. I think hone in on that for sure. Thank you so much. And so one of the, one of the last questions I have, um, is around digital products. You are so good at it. You know, when I go to your website, I see you again, it's just still the warm, welcoming resonance, right? There's that picture of you with the uh, beautiful dress and bright smile and, um, the, the fonts, the yellows, and it's welcoming, but then you're also just giving and giving there's there's so many products that i can just download for free before i even spend a dime we get connected you give so much um and obviously it's well rewarded on the other side so right now i'm stuck on well how could i be leveraging digital products one to be able to share more with the community about what i do but also as i start to think about what are the things that will allow me to also earn passive income and i'm not always have to be actively working for it yes oh my gosh okay so i was noodling on this question because I just, I love this question. And I think so many people can mm-hmm. relate and they're so good at what they do, right? Like in person, yes. you know, you can nail it. There's no doubt in your mind, but then you're like, okay, but oh, yeah. the only way to make money is by showing up. Right. And consistently mm-hmm. booking. And like, that can be kind of a rat race feeling that so many entrepreneurs don't want. That's why we got out of the rat race. Right. And so exactly. it's, it's figuring out that like both and right. Like you're still going to be consulting. Mm-hmm. This is the bread and butter, but like, how do we start to get something else moving for you? And the biggest thing that I can think of, especially knowing like you're consulting, there is a bandwidth, like you cannot consult for 500 different campuses, right? Like that's just not possible. Right. Yeah. And so you mm-hmm. actually don't need a huge volume. You just need like a deep well of like the right people, the right opportunities. And so I really believe one that we want to start growing your email list and how I would recommend figuring out what digital products or resources to create is through creating a few different freebies. So Mm -hmm. one thing that's amazing is that you can, creating a freebie can take very little time. So when I was thinking about you, I was thinking Nicole could create templates, checklists. You could create Mm. a quiz of like, how Mm -hmm. to know what your next steps are. 
Um, you could create a resource for the students. You could create a resource for the counselors. You could, you know, there's so many different people you could serve. And so you don't want right. to go super, super wide because you've got to give mm -hmm. each freebie its time and its breath to see, okay, are people willing to exchange something for it? And I think a big mistake people mm -hmm. make is that they immediately go into a paid offer without actually testing the market of like, are people willing to exchange something of value, which is their email address, which is a low value, right. but still, I mean, they're giving you access to their inbox. So that's valuable. Exactly. And you will mm -hmm. very quickly see the outlier. So I've told this story a couple different times on the show, but again, stories can be repeated. Um, before we became parents and Drew had this deep desire mm -hmm. of be being a stay at home dad, I was like, well, you've got to work until the children come. We obviously had a mm -hmm. struggle in having the children. And so in that kind of in-between period, he did health coaching and we were building mm -hmm. out his website. So he didn't even have a brand or a website yet. And we had two different freebies. So we said you could either do like at home workouts because he wanted to serve people like me, like entrepreneurs who are busy, who are struggling to like stay healthy. So he did at right. home workouts. And then he also had a freebie that was like a nutrition guide. So it was our grocery shopping and meal prep list. We put both mm -hmm. of those freebies out there. The nutrition side crushed it, like crushed yeah. it where we were going to build an entire business around at home workouts for a busy entrepreneur. Yeah. And just through the freebies, we saw that like 10 times more people wanted the nutrition. And so it totally changed wow. the copywriting, the branding, the offers, mm -hmm. like what he was actually going to create that was marketable. And so I think a lot of times people get this idea and they're like, of course, people are going to pay for this. And then they create this digital product. They put it out there. People don't buy it. They're disappointed. Mm -hmm. It's this whole thing. And so it's like test the market first, create something okay. that is valuable, that gives somebody that free value. Like you talked about where you don't have to spend a dime mm -hmm. and I will get you results through the free content that I do, whether it's through my podcast or my freebies or the downloads or the webinars. And so mm -hmm. think about the different people you want to serve. And think about maybe just two different freebies that you could create that will at least give you more of a direction. Growing your email mm -hmm. list is going to be the number one recommendation I have for you because again, you okay. don't need thousands and thousands and thousands of people. You maybe need 20 great qualified clients that are willing to pay what you charge, right? Like it's, it's kind of when sure. I was a wedding photographer, I was limited to my personal bandwidth. I wasn't going to shoot more than mm -hmm. 25 weddings. I didn't need to reach every single bride and groom or couple out there planning a wedding. I just needed the right mm -hmm. people. And so I think you have a beautiful opportunity of giving free value to people that are contemplating investing in you and leading them on the path of that consulting. And then also seeing, okay, maybe they can't afford my consulting fee, but maybe I could offer mm -hmm. them a video series or a course or a guidebook or a template or a handbook mm. or a questionnaire that they can leverage where they get my expertise without having to pay for me to physically show up. Does that help? That helps a lot. It answers so many questions. One, also it um, validates what I was looking at and putting together that there's only so many campuses when I was looking yes. at, okay, our six week program. Yes. I, probably only want that on six or seven campuses yes. for it because our team is going to be at max capacity because six weeks to be in person somewhere, that's a lot. So there's a very limited number of campuses yep. we can do that on. But when it comes to tools, I've been thinking um, a course, you know, coming out with a course in the middle of writing a book. But then I didn't think about the other resources that you're talking about, right? Questionnaires, different tools that they could start leveraging right now yes. um, and utilize that expertise and I could, it's still another form of giving that value, yeah. earning something in return, um, and also keeping them as a warm lead for yes. potentially more down the road. Yes. But it allows us, our, our team, to just kind of breathe um, and break up what we're able and capable to do. Because yeah. capacity is, is really important and boundaries yeah. are really important. I love it. Oh my gosh. I cannot yeah. wait to see what you do. Where can everybody, I could go on. I literally had to look at the clock because I was like, we could go all day, all day. I yes, love this. Nicole, I cannot Thank wait you. to see what you do. And I just have to say, 
I want, I want more of you. Like you do, you have this beautiful essence about you that I feel Mm. like cannot be bottled up and duplicated. And so I want to just encourage you because I know that you, you know, thinking about the podcast or YouTube or all these Mm -hmm. different things. And it's like, just show up. It's you. It's not the production. It's not the way things look. It is you. And like you embody Mm. that confidence and power in such a beautiful way. And so where can everybody find you and connect with you and learn more about you and watch your journey as you move forward? Okay. Thank you so much. I'm just still basking in that and really, really appreciate that. Um, uh, it, it means so much because you are very authentic about your approach. And so I value that and people can find me on LinkedIn. I love to hang out on LinkedIn. So Nicole Guanzura. So if you look up my name, uh, last name, G W A N Z U R A. Um, Nicole Guanzura, find me on LinkedIn. Let's hang out over there. Um, And also on our website, simplyeac.com is our website. And then if you ever want to listen to to a conversation with me, continue um, the conversation. Um, Our podcast just went live, Wellness with EAC. So whether you're finding us at simplyeac.com on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, Wellness with EAC, uh, or come, let's spend time on LinkedIn. Please share what your favorite part of this conversation was. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This was such a treat. Oh, thank you for having me. It was so much fun. Thanks so much, Jenna. We crushed Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have a quick second, take a second, make sure you're subscribed to my show. And if you love today's marketing tips, tricks, strategies, and life talk, then check out this episode. You are going to love it. So I was recently at a mastermind and we were on the closing day sharing our closing thoughts. And my friend Jim Quick was sitting right next to me and he said something so poignant. The topic was comfort zones. And essentially what he said is that there are two types of hard that nearly everyone is experiencing. The hardness that comes when you're stuck inside of your comfort zone, but also the hard that comes when you're trying to break away from it.